Given what was already contemplated so far, it might just now be the right time to take a look at alchemy. Sure, there's that supposed secret chemical craft that hid a deeper but much simpler meaning beneath its proposition of turning lower, uh, lower metals into gold. However, that is not what I'm really going to contemplate on. I will use some of its terminology, sure, but my contemplation on alchemy is that of an individual internal process through which the observer can dissolve a fact, an event, a word, or even groups of these, to then obtain from them an unexpected golden meaning, a pointer that at the same time reaffirms reality's full state, which I will call Mercury in this presentation, and the beckoning truth behind it, or beyond it, which is gold. That is my starting point. And yes, Carl Jung's ideas about psychological alchemy are dear to me, but uh, in, in this presentation I just diverge in the sense it is applied. While for Jung, alchemy is the process of individuation as a whole, and well, well done uh, work in that field, I see alchemy as a more momentary procedure, whose small results are bits that can be again dissolved together to be refined at a later incident. As any of you listen to any of my contemplations, you may successfully or unsuccessfully transmute the conjunction of words and phrases, or spells as previously observed, into ideas or realizations that otherwise would remain hidden still. Note that the responsibility of that success or otherwise does not lie solely on the alchemical capacity of the listener, but also on the ability or lack thereof, of the speaker to provide the proper ingredients, so to speak, for you, for you to process and, and get the realization of the ineffable shard that you can obtain. And even so, since there is a mixture of ingredients found in the self with those provided by the other, the results will invariably vary among individuals. A clear example of this can be found among the common sections addressing the statement that truth speaks no words, that I more recently complimented with and also does not move or become. The external ingredients, that is, the statement and context provided, is the same to all listeners. Yet, some will have been able to transmute the ineffable meaning, while others had different ideas about what was meant. Either way is fine, this is not presented as a test of any sort, nor is, is there any right or wrong answer. I am as far from a formal teacher as I can be. I am being more like a fellow learner who was asked to come before the class and exhibit his homework, if you can see that analogy. This said, I must emphasize that this is my viewpoint and uh, anything, and I mean anything, in this reality can be subject to an alchemical perspective. I mean, if you take any of Keith Jarrett's solo improvisation concerts, my personal favorite artist, by the way, and if you don't know any of them, the best entry point is the Colm concert that can be found on YouTube. It is clear that he is able to transmute the learned formal language of music into a voyage through his golden realization, which causes us to process our own inner voyages as listeners, if that's your thing, I mean. Anyway, whether it is the sublime musical voyages of Jarrett's improvisation or the mere annotated contemplations of this, your classmate, who tries to translate them into words for all of us, including myself, the alchemical process is verifiable. Since our egos love cataloging everything, it just makes it easier for the linear minds of our self-homunculus pet, I will attempt to go through the stages of this internal alchemical realization process, which, remember, is in my view, a process that goes on at each momentary incident or event that the individual is faced with, using the stages of the magnum opus system, which, in fact, Carl Jung also use, used in a different, much broader sense. Any event, incident or piece of information, that is, group of words, sentences and so on, that strikes the individual as a transmutation attempt, which may or may not be voluntarily triggered, 
will be first met by his or her own shadows. That is, the first layer of reception is the ego with his sensation addiction. For the unconscious individual, moving on automatic ego identification, the process usually ends at the first stage, nigredo, which is where the information or event is filtered and catalogued by the shadows permeating the ego identification, abandoned as it is. So the information is, by the automatic ego under the shadow, placed in categories pertaining usefulness towards self-desires. Is this information useful to obtain more of what is pleasing to me, me as an ego? Or is it contrary to it? If it is useful, then it is stored as a tool for the ego to use for self-gratification. If not, it is discarded as useless garbage. In both cases, in this stage of nigredo, our confrontation of the event with the shadow, for the shadow-ruled ego, the information remains in its mer mercury state, because it can only be used in its first layer or application in the reality that it recognizes and can exist in. But to the ego that has at least been able to break itself free from the absolute tyranny of the reality senses, the nigredo stage is not the end of the process. The mercury event, so to speak, which is, at the first layer, a mere thing in reality, is still firstly catalogued by the shadows and ego, but, then does, but that does not prevent it from sending it further, after having it decomposed by the shadow and chewed up by the ego. The color black, nigredo means blackness, is used to reflect the reality thing as a decomposed mass of primal elements, so digested by unconscious or subconscious ch uh, shadow enzymes. And so it is now ready for the next stage, which is albedo, which means whiteness, that represents the emotional confrontation with the previously chewed up or decomposed information. Individuals who are able to go beyond the shadow-ego pairing at the gate, so to speak, but that are then unable to resist or analyze their emotional states, will typically stop here. The information provided by the event and pre-digested by the ego may look either tempting for self-gratification, which will trigger a gratified emotional response to store the information under that category, or unappetizing for it, as it would require a deeper look beyond emotion then triggering a negative emotional response to try to make the individual refuse any further contact with or analysis of the incident. But the individual that has prepared his or her own emotional responses to not be the end but just another stage can then work further on this now white silvery substance of emotion and bring it to the heat of the crucible in the inner conscious. I say inner as opposed to the outer conscious of the ego, that is a conscious that depends solely on reality, nothing else. Under the fire of the conscious light, this mental matter can now be subject to further analysis and rearrangement of its components. Individuals who have learned to control their emotions and have consequently gone way beyond mere ego existence can still become trapped and stop at the citrinitas, which means yellowness. It is a stage of the higher conscious. In those cases, the thrice digested event has been subconsciously decomposed, emotionally stirred up, consciously illuminated, and is now, at that point, stored as a higher kind of knowledge. But this is not yet the final stage possible, because knowledge at this level is still mercury, albeit refined, uh, but the transmutation has not yet occurred. It is knowledge, but not wisdom. It is in the final stage, for those individuals who have become able, even if only at times, to go beyond the subconscious and unconscious decomposition 
to go beyond the emotional stirring of the matters in their focus, to go even beyond the higher conscious burning of the mer mercurial substance that made it into their mind's laboratory, it is for those that the final possible state uh, is available. It is that of rubedo, or redness. Attaining rubedo both requires and produces the philosopher's stone, which is, in this contemplation, better defined as intuition. Not, note, a subconscious, emotional, or logical intuition, but a faculty that emerges from beyond the mind, yet seemingly preceding it. Every time this process is concluded, more intuition, that is, more philosopher's stone, becomes available to the individual. The application of this philosopher's stone intuition upon the mercurial information that went through all the previous stages is itself already a realization of truth beyond reality. Yet, as seen, it used only the matter which reality is made of, this mercurial substance that we interact with every day. That is why it is at this stage of sheer transmutation that gold is made visible from that processed mercury. When we take, for example, a text, the individual started off with an event or information that was solely composed of reality ingredients, words in this case, and then went through the indicated stages of processing them, not resting in any of these steps until reaching the melding with the Philosopher's Stone, the true intuition, able to transmute the lower metal mercury words, in this Rubedo stage, into the gold or true knowing, which is ineffable. At that point, the individual knows something, but may find him or herself unable to transmit or even translate the recalled knowing that came to be through the alchemical transmutation of that reality information. Usually, then, a reversal of the process may need to take place, as the obtained gold may need to be brought back down to mercury for ego memory storage or for communication. I know, it seems complicated when I put it like this, but that's just appearance. Moreover, the steps of this entire process can take but an instant, so they may not even be recognized individually. Nevertheless, this is why I put so much emphasis on the absolute need for each individual to contemplate themselves, so that each of us is going through the steps of the inner alchemical process when interpreting information or any event in reality. With this process, a song that was written to promote and enforce the system can suddenly be transmuted into a whole new and opposite meaning screaming freedom from reality at every verse. A film, likewise. However, the most important usage of the internal alchemy is when faced with an adversary. And by adversary I am referring to an entity whose sole interest is to rob us of our Philosopher's Stone, our spirit, soul, truth connection, whatever words work for you. It can wear the face of a friend or of a foe, but this adversary's intent can be transmuted and become a powerful aid in the search for truth. The adversaries will put us to the test. They will test our subconscious, our emotions, our reasoning, and ultimately our intuition. It is when we turn their attacks, be them veiled or opened, into the gold of love, when we do not get stuck along these alchemical stages by cataloging the resulting processed attacks under the directive of ego gratification, that a little bit more of the curtain is lifted, that a bit more of the truth comes through and takes its proper place. Every bit of mercury in reality will try to convince you, yourself, who is the only entity that can actually decide to do it, to transmute down your own Philosopher's Stone intuition into a lower metal, thus powering reality. So turn the tables on the game and transmute them instead, internally, 
into the uncreated gold that is silent, has always been there, and never became.